Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes, and the reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out, and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the collateral ligaments at the metacarpophalangeal joint. The last video was about the structure. We talked about the molar plate, right, and the capsule around it, and how the metacarpophalangeal joint is formed. This video will be about the ligaments, then something called as the sagittal band, and fibrocartilage. And once we describe all the structures, we will also talk about the range of motion at the metacarpophalangeal joint. So now let's start with the topic. So this collateral ligament can be divided into two parts: the collateral ligament proper and accessory collateral ligament. Now these ligaments, since they are collateral, they are present on both sides, radial and ulnar side. So if you can see over here, the one on top over here is the collateral ligament proper, and slightly below is the accessory collateral ligament. Over here again, the one behind or one on the dorsal side is your collateral ligament proper and the accessory collateral ligament now what is the difference between both of these the collateral ligament proper gets lengthened with flexion of 0 to 80 degrees and it gets lengthened by around 3 to 4 mm whereas the accessory collateral ligament it shortens with 0 to 80 degree of flexion so as i go for flexion the collateral ligament proper will lengthen and accessory will shorten and then as i go for extension exactly opposite will happen the proper ligament will shorten and the accessory ligament will lengthen so both of them lengthen and shorten at a different range okay so over here you can see this one is shortened and this one is lengthened and as you go into extension the proper is shortened and the accessory ligament is lengthened now these ligaments since they are on the side they do help in prevention of excessive abduction and adduction forces at your metacarpophalangeal joint but apart from this we also need to take into consideration some other factors like your mcp when it is in flexion it is in a closed pack position so all the structures and the capsule is really taut over there so anyways the closed pack position of the joint will prevent excessive abduction and adduction correct another thing that can block this abduction adduction is the structure of the joint it is a bicondylar joint meaning it has two condyles right so if you can see over here these two condyles so there is good amount of abduction adduction over here but as you go into flexion these condyles will block the adduction and abduction movement so also the condyles are responsible for preventing that abduction and adduction so we cannot directly say that these two ligaments together help in preventing abduction adduction because along with that there are so many other factors that is the condyle the shape of the joint and also the close pack position of the joint in flexion which prevents this abduction and adduction so that's what i mentioned here abduction adduction at mcp is reduced with flexion due to the bicondylar shape of the mcp head and also the bony block at around 70 degrees now that we have studied about the ligaments let's move on to the sagittal bands now what are these sagittal bands these are basically structures that connect the volar plate you remember volar plate we had mentioned this red color structure right volar plate to the extensor digitorum communis this is your extensor digitorum communis right which is going from the back side right these extensors the extensor digitorum communis is present over here and volar plate is present on the front so it connects both of these structures and kind of binds them together so that's what i mentioned here it connects the volar plate extensor digitorum communis and also extensor expansion that is basically the uh, covering of the extensor digitorum it's the extensor hood we will discuss about it in further videos so what is the role of this sagittal band it basically helps to stabilize the volar plate correct over here and like this it does it at all the four mcp joints and it also comes 
on top of your TMC ligament that is the transverse metacarpal ligament you remember the transverse metacarpal ligament which was going like this so it comes on top of that so it kinds of binds everything together like this you can see this sagittal band over here right it binds everything together all the ligaments the capsule everything it's like a band which holds everything together and provides that stability so stability is its main function of the sagittal band next going to the another smaller structure is the fibrocartilage now this is projected this fibrocartilage is projected into your mcp pip and dip all these joints one two three and basically this comes out of your extensor hood the inner surface of the extensor hood this extensor hood what is its function it basically connects the tendons to the phalanges so these are the tendons over here and these are phalanges they connect it to the phalanges so it comes from the inner surface of that and helps in increasing the surface area of contact at the articulation so basically it improves the articulation increases the congruency at the joints that is your fibrocartilage and that is its function so now that we have covered the structure of the metacarpophalangeal joint let's move on to the range of motion now range of motion flexion is around 90 degrees in your index finger and if you go to the pinky finger it is around 110 degrees so there is this pattern that is seen that is it starts increasing the range of motion starts increasing from index to the your little finger see you can see the slope correct so that is the first thing second is extension is around 20 degrees but again it will vary from person to person and this is used to check the flexibility in different people depending on the ligament laxity then also there is abduction adduction which we spoke about how it can vary with different ranges all you need to know is it will increase when your metacarpophalangeal joint is in extension and when it is in when it is in flexion there will be it will be a close back position so it will limit and also because of the bony block and then also there is something called as the passive rotation that is this movement right this movement although we cannot do it actively but it is possible if you want to see over here this movement the rotation is possible slight amount and this helps in moving your hand into different positions and that is its function so with that we finish off this topic now let's quickly summarize we saw that the radial and ulnar collateral ligament proper and accessory ligament proper are present these get tight and relaxed at different ranges the proper ligament gets tight or lengthened at 0 to 80 degrees and shortened in extension and exactly opposite happens at the accessory collateral ligament then we saw sagittal band how it creates that stability by connecting the volar plate to the extensor digitorum communis tendon and holding everything together we also saw the fibrocartilage which is projected into all these different joints the pip dip and your mcp and what it does it increases the surface area at the joint and improves the articulation and then we finally saw the range of motion so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please like share and subscribe to the channel it will really help me out and thank you for watching